Hey everyone, Reflected here, and today I'm going to talk about graphic settings in DCS World 2.7. I'm not going to tell you how to set each setting. I'm going to tell you what they do and how much FPS they cost and make recommendations, but at the end of the day, it's up to you what compromises you are willing to make. Before we go here, I want you to click on gameplay. Go down here. This is Wake Turbulence. What it does is that if you enable it, it will calculate all the disturbances in the air uh, that's behind an aircraft. So if you fly behind a tanker, you will have rough and bumpy air. It's realistic, it's cool. And if you fly modern jets only in missions with not a lot of aircraft around, I would probably switch it on. But if you fly World War II missions, like my campaign missions with, uh, I don't know, 70 bombers and 50 fighters, imagine DCS has to calculate all these uh, turbulence effects for every single aircraft and that completely kills your FPS. It's really taxing. So if you fly World War II, switch it off. Um, it, it saves you a lot of headache. Now, let's go to the system settings. First, we have textures. This costs a lot of FPS. Uh, because if you set it to medium or low, you'll have lower resolution uh, aircraft textures like cockpit and, uh, and externals. However, I really don't like to make a compromise here. I'm also a skinner and you know, if I spend days on a good looking skin, I don't want to ruin the quality by setting this to medium. So you can save lots of FPS here, but it's up to you if you want to make the compromise not for me. I always leave it on high. However, terrain textures, that's something completely different. The settings are low or high and the difference is sometimes impossible to spot. Sometimes when you're low, you can see a subtle difference between low and high, like at low altitudes, but it's just not worth it. And in terms of performance, if you set it to high, it will cost you uh, at least one gigabyte of uh, virtual RAM. So it's just not worth it for me. So if you're struggling with performance, I think this is the first big win, low hanging fruit, no brainer setting. Set it to low. Civilian traffic, it doesn't really matter. Not a big hit. I mean, if you like some ambient traffic, some movement on the road, I would set it to low. I usually set it to off because I don't want uh, the randomly generated cars and trucks to interfere with uh, the trucks and ground units that I placed there. They may not even interfere. I just set it to off, but low is fine as well. Doesn't really matter. Water, again, you can save FPS here, but I would recommend you save it somewhere else because you lose a lot of eye candy if you set it to medium or low. I always keep it on high. Visibility range. Now, next to terrain textures, this is the other no-brainer. Go here first if you have uh, any problems. So this affects the range, the radius, within which the game will render uh, trees and buildings and and ground structures and objects. Now, I see a lot of people set it to extreme, ultra or high, but frankly, high is good enough and medium is also plenty enough. So it's not like it, it doesn't look bad at all, but if I set it uh, from high to medium, I get 10 more FPS. So it costs a lot of performance. Uh, I would really recommend to set it as low as you're comfortable with. 
Mine is on medium. This is where you can save a lot. Heat blur. Well, I don't want to turn it off because heat blurs look cool. Not a lot of difference between low and high, so I leave it on low. I don't think it has a lot of FPS impact. Shadows. There you can save some FPS, but I'm a big fan of good looking cockpits and good looking aircraft and I just really like crisp shadows, so I set it to high. Because I'm in 2D, if I had VR, I would probably try and set it to medium or low. It will save you a lot of performance and maybe in VR the difference is not so visible because the picture quality is not that crisp anyway. I would definitely not set it to off because cockpits just look very weird and kind of terrible if you set it off but uh, at least low or medium but if you don't like compromises leave it on high but it costs performance resolution uh, aspect ratio monitors da, da, da. and we have cockpit displays what's a cockpit display the most obvious part where you can see it is mirrors so uh, what I would do is I would set it to 512 and if you look at the rearview mirror and the picture quality is too bad and you really can't live with it set it to 1024 it will cost you some FPS for sure so it's really up to you if you want to make that compromise I would definitely not set it to every frame because then you tell uh, your computer to render a great quality picture no matter what so prioritize this over more important stuff and mirrors are just not that important MSAA it's whatever kind of anti-aliasing so without any straight lines will look jagged like stairs uh, and it's kind of terrible um, and there are many ways to, to straighten them, them out and make them look smooth MSAA is the way you want to go it costs a lot of FPS so be aware of that there's not a lot of difference between two or four. So I would either set it to two, or if, again, I was in VR and I was in desperate need of more FPS, I would even consider turning it off and then forcing uh, AA from within the NVIDIA control panel. What I'm doing now is I set it to two and enhance it from the NVIDIA control panel. 4 is just a waste of FPS, I think. Depth of field, lens effects, motion blur, that's only external views. Some of them are really costly in terms of FPS, have a great impact, but just leave them off. They're just cinematic effects. Now, clouds, the new setting. Uh, frankly I've just seen a comparison video between low and ultra and the difference was really subtle not night and day at all with ultra you have the little fluffs and puffs more detailed and smaller but it doesn't necessarily look that much better between low and ultra you have a difference of 10 to 15 FPS between standard and ultra you have like 5 to 8 uh, in my experience, I would just leave it on standard. If you really can afford losing FPS because you have plenty, you can set it to ultra. Maybe if you want to take screenshots or make videos, but otherwise there just there's just no point in losing five FPS by making making the clouds look just a tiny bit better. So I set it to standard. SSAA is another way to, to straighten lines like MSAA, but it does it in a different way. I may be mistaken, but as far as I understand, it upscales your picture 
like multiplying your resolution by 1.5 or 2 and then downscales it in a way that it looks crisper or sharper maybe it's not even true the point is is that it's really taxing it has a huge performance impact it's very efficient so your game will look really good it looks much better than msaa but it's super costly so unless you have one of those nuclear power plants leave it off use msaa no first use your nvidia control panel if that's not enough and you can afford losing more fps set it to two and if that's still not enough and you have still you still have performance to spare try 1.5 but you were warned this is really taxing SSLR no idea what that stands for the R is reflections I think um, it means that okay imagine looking at the silver wings of a p51 Mustang if you turn this off only uh, light will be reflected off the wing if you turn it on everything will be reflected off the wing so you look at the wing from an angle you will see the reflections of I don't know the national insignia uh, I hope you see what I mean again I really like good-looking aircraft so I turn it on it costs FPS if there aren't too many planes around it's not that bad it's worth it but if you have 50 or 100 aircraft Mm, all the reflections have to be calculated uh, that's gonna cost so it's really up to you SSAO that's a way for it a screen space ambient occlusion uh, whatever that means in English it means that um, the areas that are blocked from the global light source will be made darker so it's kind of a shadow enhancement it's uh, it, there's an obvious difference when you look at cockpits for example with all the little um, gauges and dials so I would definitely recommend uh, turning it on because it doesn't cost anything almost anything and it makes the game look so much better especially cockpits so I would really recommend leaving it on moving to the right side clutter grass well, if you fly low and slow, turn it all the way up, it won't save you a lot of FPS if you turn it down. I fly World War II aircraft from uh, grass airfield, so I have it maxed out. Forest visibility. You can leave it at 100% because it's 100% of your visibility range. So 100% of medium will be different than 100% of ultra, obviously. If I set it to 50%, forests and trees will be rendered uh, within a radius that's 50% of the medium visibility range, so whatever is selected here. And after that, only um, buildings will be rendered. It would look kind of weird, but it's another way to save FPS. Just max it out and dial in your visibility visibility range instead these two are new settings as well forest details factor and scenery details factor if you lower it the resolution of building or tree textures will be lower they won't be as detailed if you fly fast and high it doesn't really matter because i fly in TD, uh, 2d and I fly World War II aircraft, I leave them at one, at one. But again, if I was in VR, I would probably not really notice the difference between one and let's say 0 0.6, 0 0.7, because uh, the, image, the, the, the picture quality in VR is not as good as, in, uh, as on a 2D screen. And last time I checked, uh, a setting like this gave me about five more FPS so if you really need five more FPS 
and you're in VR, I would give this a try and experiment. Like how far you're willing to go and how much you're willing to compromise. The lower you go, the worse buildings will look, but again, it's up to you. Preload radius. This is the most elusive one. It's really hard to dial uh, in properly. So it determines the range, the radius within which uh, the game will load everything in, its, in the computer's memory. So if you max it out, loading times will be longer, but you can fly longer distances before your PC has to load new parts of the map and new sceneries. So that's cool, let's max it out, right? Well, no, because it hogs your, your RAM and there won't be any left for other important stuff such as textures and shadows and water and whatnot. Okay, let's turn it all the way down then. Well, not exactly because then uh, every time you move on the map, your computer will have to reload new parts of the map. So that's not ideal either. Um, the setting here really depends on your other settings and your computer. I have 32 gigabytes of RAM, but I still set it rather low. You have to experiment with this. There's no uh, rule of thumb. Then chimney smoke density. It's a bit misleading. It's not the density of the chimney smoke. It's how many chimneys will smoke. So if you set it all the way up, you'll have lots of chimneys that will smoke. And if you set it all the way down, then you will see no smoke at all. I set it to the middle. It's probably not that important. Uh, I like to have some smoke so that I can see the wind direction, but it doesn't really matter. Gamma is an other very interesting setting. The middle of the slider is 2.2, but don't read a lot into this number. It could be called 542 or, or just one, whatever. That's the middle of the slider. That's the default setting. That's how the game is supposed to look. Now, every computer, every display, every screen is different. So um, you may want to fine tune it by making it a little lighter or darker. I would not go much lower than, than two. I have mine on 2.1, see? But I see a lot of people who set it all the way down and yeah, at first maybe you think, yeah, that's a nice effect. It's like a vintage Lomo effect, but it's just way too dark and you start getting artifacts or on night missions, you won't see jack shit. Uh, I would just either leave it in the middle and if your game looks too bright for your liking, dial it down just one or two notches but not a lot fortunately you can you can change this from within a mission so you can immediately see the effects now anisotropic filtering almost no performance cost so you can set it to 8 or 16 it has something to do with the texture quality whatever Terrain object shadows. Oh, that's another big win here. I would not recommend to set it to default. I would recommend to set it to flat. Imagine a hillside with, with trees and sunset. So the light is coming from the side. If you set it to default, the long shadows of the trees will follow uh, follow the ground, the, the, the terrain. If you set it to flat, uh, the shadows will be horizontal. So in that case, they will kind of stick out uh, like spikes from the mountainside. If you fly a Huey low and slow, it may look a bit weird at first, but I don't think it's a big deal and it's only under certain conditions anyway. So uh, I usually set it to flat. I, I really like to set it to flat. 
default is just not worth the performance impact because there's a lot of performance impact. Cockpit global illumination. Some people would say there's no point turning it on. It's like when you fly low over a green pasture, the light in the cockpit will have that greenish hue. If you fly low over water, the light in the cockpit will have a bluish hue. But I'm kind of a sucker for good looking uh, cockpits. So I turn it on. It costs some performance. It's not a massive hit. It's really up to you. Rain droplets. Turn them on unless you really struggle because they look cool. V-Sync. If you look around and you see tearing in the image, uh, turn it on. It will put a cap on your FPS. It won't be able to go uh, higher than a, some sort of limit, but that limit is high enough, so don't worry about it too much. And it's really recommended to uh, run DCS in full screen mode because you'll get better performance. Okay, I hope that was helpful and I hope that helped you uh, get a much better performance from DCS. Again, there's no right or wrong, there's no rule of thumb. You really have to check and see for yourself and decide what's important to you and where you are willing to make compromises. Okay, well, thanks for watching and uh, Enjoy the beautiful 2.7 clouds. See you later.